fellow book friends, I'm Jen and welcome to my reading life. So for today's video, I am going to do my first ever booktube book haul. Ooh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> but I wanted to start off by sharing with you all that I had made an announcement on Bookstagram that I was going to try to limit the number of books I purchased each month this year to two. I'm just going to tell you right now that I have failed miserably because I purchased, I don't know, 10, 12 books in January. <laughs> okay. I didn't actually buy all of them. Regardless, I have all of these books which have now come into my life and are going to go on my unread shelves already. I'm adding more books to my TBR than I would have hoped. Let's just get into the book haul because that's why we're all here. So first book. So whenever I go to my local libraries, I like to check out the Friends of the Library bookstore that they have. And so I went to two different libraries this month, picking up different books. And I found two books on both occasions uh, that I wanted to purchase. And the books are all really inexpensive, like 50 cents, maybe a dollar if you're getting a big heart back, but they're really, you know, like it's a hard deal to pass up. And clearly I could not. So the first book I got was Paul Gallico's uh, Too Many Ghosts. Now I love Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris, which is probably Paul Gallico's most well-known book. I'm actually due for a reread of that one. I may try to do that this spring. And if you haven't seen the recent um, movie that came out, of it. I actually really enjoyed that too. And the um, costuming in it is fantastic. So, but this book is actually a supernatural like ghost story. And there is a psychic investigator, Alexander Hero, and he goes to Lord Paradigm's lovely ancestral home, um, which is haunted. And what whimsical poltergeist amused himself by depositing dead rabbits on plates at dinner time. Who was the footloose nun who paid unnerving nocturnal visits to the guest bedrooms? And what about the harp that played only when disaster was imminent? So yeah, sounds fun. I'm always up for giving it a try. And uh, I know Paul Gallico writes lots and lots of different things and not everything works for everybody, but I figure this might be a fun read in October. So who doesn't like a good ghost story? Okay. Next up is a mystery by, I always forget how to pronounce her name. I look it up all the time. Gayo Marsh. This is Death in a White Tie. I have a number of her books on my shelves to read. I've read a number of her books. A lot of them are set in the theater, which is one of my very favorite settings for a mystery. If I was going to write a mystery, I would absolutely set it in a theater. I did a lot of theater in my life uh, growing up and in my into my adulthood. So yes, it's just something that I, I really find fun in mystery novels. But this one is actually set at a ball. Somebody is asphyxiated. And then uh, Roderick Allen, which is Marsh's uh, detective, comes in to solve the crime. So I'll be looking forward to reading this one. And then at the second library that I went to, I found a couple of other books. One was such an amazing find and I can't wait to share it with you. But first up, I found this Ritz, the London Ritz book of afternoon tea, which I love tea. It's going to be something that you learn about me. <laughs> very particular. I really only like a couple of kinds of tea. I'm very much a black kind of British breakfast tea type of a girl. But this looks so fun. It's got like recipes and... I think little like anecdotes and stories and different things. Um, yeah, so, you know, I was like for a dollar or whatever it was. Yeah, sign me up. So I'm going to have to try some of the recipes in here. And then my amazing, amazing find at the library was this Beverly Nichols. Sun, what is this? Sunlight on the Lawn. <laughs> and I believe this is like... It's not the first, there's a series of books and this isn't the first one. So, but my mom has a lot of Beverly Nichols' books. So I'm probably going to borrow them from her and then work my way through them until I get to this one. And then obviously I can read my own copy, but it is in like pristine condition. I mean, I'm sorry. 
but it was just like, ugh, it's beautiful. Look at that. I just, I couldn't pass it up for a dollar. Brand new. Okay. So that's it for my library bookstore purchases. Next up, I had received a Christmas gift that I needed to return to Amazon uh, because it just didn't work out. And so I got a fairly good sized credit from that return. And what better thing to spend my credit on than books? <laughs> so I purchased a number of books, which I've already received. And I think I have two more coming. I know. I know I've been very bad this month, but, um, you know, these didn't actually cost me any money. So that's kind of fun. Free books, <laughs> my favorite kind. All right. So first up is the five red herrings by Dorothy L. Sayers. I am doing a read through of all of the Lord Peter Whimsy mysteries this year. And I read whose body in January. I'm going to read clouds of witness, which is the second book in February and each month I will work my way through until I believe November will be the last book I read. There's, I believe, 11 in the series, not including the short story collections, so, uh, which I don't have copies of, but I have all of the novels. And this was the last one that I needed to complete my collection, so I'm very excited to have it. I believe this is like book five or six, so I'll get to this later in the year. Then next up, so... I think about six months ago, I started hearing people on Bookstagram talking about the Emma M. Lyon journals novel series. And I was so intrigued. They looked really interesting. And I finally picked one up. I can't even remember where I got it. Um, but then a couple of Bookstagram friends were going to be reading it. And so I asked to join their group and we read the first two volumes and I just fell in love with Emma. They take place in the late uh, 19th century and Emma has just recently returned to London to her home there. She is an orphan and her uncle has been sort of the caretaker of this house. She has no money of her own. She only owns the home um, in this neighborhood, St. Crispian's, which has lots of interesting characters in it and lots of interesting things that happen, like items in your house will go missing and show up in somebody else's house. And they have a tea shop where you can take the random items that show up in your house and leave them there and their owners can come looking for them. <laughs> so it's very strange and very fun. And there are some potential love interests for Emma. Um, she has a lot of, uh, antagonism with her uncle. She has a domineering aunt who wants to have her help her cousin come out into society. So anyway, it's just super interesting. And I think there's about eight volumes that are, that have been published so far. And now I have three and four, and I cannot wait to get to these. I will probably read volume three in February, maybe volume four too. We'll, we'll see how I do. Next up is The Little Village School by Gervais Finn. I can't remember who on Bookstagram recommended this to me, but I was talking about how I really enjoy reading books about teachers and set in schools. Uh, some of my favorite books are uh, to serve them all my days. Last year I read Up the Down Staircase, which I loved. The Year of Miss Agnes is a middle grade uh, book that takes place in a school. And yeah, I just, I find that fascinating. So somebody recommended this to me and said, you're gonna love this. And it sounds amazing. So it sounds, Elizabeth Devine causes quite a stir on her arrival in the village. No one can understand why the head of a big inner city school would want to come to sleepy little Barton in the Dale to a primary with more problems than school dinners. So yeah, sounds good. I'm up for any story about teachers. If you have any other recommendations for stories set in schools, please let me know because that is one of my very favorites. <laughs> Oh, also To Sir With Love. If you haven't read that book, that is a fantastic book about a teacher. And the movie with Sidney Poitier is also excellent. I highly recommend them both. So next up is one of my very favorite authors, D.E. Stevenson. I just love her. I have started a love affair with D.E. Stevenson this past year uh, when I read Miss Bunkle's book. And then I read, I think, four others of her books. 
but I read Victoria Cottage in January and it is the start of a series about the Daring family. And this is book two in the series. So I actually had Victoria Cottage and I have the third book in the series, which is Winter and Rough Weather. Uh, so I needed book two. And this one, Carolyn Daring is the main character in uh, Victoria Cottage. And her sister, Mamie Johnstone, is the main character in Music in the Hills. So I'm excited to start this one, hopefully very soon, because like I said, I love her. Next up is The Friendly Air by Elizabeth Cadell. I am in an online book club, the Cozy Reader Book Club. We are a brand new book club. We just started in January. And um, yeah, so this is gonna be our March read, The Friendly Air by Elizabeth Cadell. And I haven't read Elizabeth Cadell before, but I've been wanting to. And it says, this is about, it takes place in sunny Portugal where young, beautiful Emma Chalice finds herself as the temporary companion to Lady Grantley who has just bought a home there. She took on the task at the request of her fiance, Gerald Delmont, brilliant, sophisticated, and with a promising legal career ahead. A perfect husband for Emma, but would he be? Hmm. Enter handsome local lawyer Robert Weybridge, some eccentric neighbors, a mysterious young woman with five small children who takes up residence in a packing crate, and you have the ingredients for one of Elizabeth Cadell's finest refreshing romances. So, that sounds super fun. And I love that cover. <laughs> So the next book I have to talk about was actually gifted to me by the publisher. It is an advanced reader copy of Savage Innocence by Avril Horner. Uh, this is a biography of Barbara Commons. Now, I actually haven't read any Barbara Commons yet, but I do have Our Spoons Came from Woolworth on my shelf, and I'm planning to read that and read the biography. So I hopefully have both some context, uh, and then I can learn a little, a little bit more about Barbara Commons. Uh, this says the extraordinary 20th century writer Barbara Commons led a life as captivating as the narrative she spun. This pioneering biography reveals the journey of a woman who experienced hardship and single motherhood before the age of 30, but went on to publish a sequence of novels unique in the English language. So I'm excited to read this one and thank you to Manchester University Press for the advanced proof copy. Okay. I made it through all of them. So that is my January book haul. And yeah, definitely leave me a comment below. Tell me, have you read any of these books? Did you love them? Are any of them on your TBR? Uh, would you like to buddy read something? Let me know. I'm always up for stuff like that. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, book friends, happy reading.